From the book of Luke, chapter 4. Verse 14, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. They went out of fame of him through all the region round about. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. As a child of God, it's important for you and I to realize that the very same anointing that was given unto Jesus has been extended unto us. Now we understand that the Bible declares in John 3 and verse 34 that because Jesus spoke the word of God, God gave him the spirit without measure, inferring that you and I have it by measure. When Jesus left the earth, he did not give his ministry to one person. Some believe that Peter became the head of the church, but that's not true. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, the rock wasn't Peter. The rock was the revelation that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. On that rock, I'll build my church, not on Peter. Because Peter comes and Peter goes. But Jesus, the rock, stands for time and eternity. Can you say amen? And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. It's not about your ability. It's about his ability. And grace given according to the measure of the gift of Christ is in many diversities of the operation of the Spirit of God because he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints or maturing of the saints so the saints can do the work of the ministry, so the saints can grow up and become mature not dependent upon outside sources for food, but being fully trained, mature within themselves. Don't need to go anywhere for prayer. They can pray. Obviously, nothing wrong with getting people to pray or agree with you. But when you always need somebody to pray for you, something's wrong with you. Are you listening to me? You have to come to that place where you can be sustained within yourself outside of the religious circle. Because many in leadership in religious realms want to make you dependent upon them so that you, it's almost like if, if you're going to have cows and you're gonna have, they're going to have calves, if that calf is going to drink from the mother for the rest of its life, what kind of a calf is it? Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, there's a time when you have children, the mother will breastfeed the baby, but you don't want a seven-year-old still breastfeeding. And I know that's a, you know, a very pictorial thing for you to see. But in the church, there are people that have been in the church for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. They beg babies with big diapers on, and they still want to nurse. And they haven't grown and haven't matured. Every believer must become productive in the kingdom of God. How do you do that? By the anointing that you've received of him. The anointing is not just something for a service. I've said this many times. You can bring an Aflac duck in you and the thing will get anointed. Aflac, Aflac. It'll, it'll get anointed. It'll run down the aisle. When you feel the presence of God, that's great. But what are you going to do on a Monday morning? What are you going to do on a Tuesday when all hell is breaking loose against you? 
That's when the heaven in you has to rise up to meet the hell coming against you. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, <laughs> uh, you know, when, when storms come against me, I'm, I'm, open, I'm, I'm, I'm opening up something. I'm opening up a can. <laughs> I, I'll tell you right now, I'll take it to whatever level the devil wants it. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. And that standard is not going to come from heaven. Like you're standing there and the enemy's coming against you and suddenly heaven, and you go, oh, wow, God delivered me. No, it's out of you, out of your belly, out of your innermost being, your mouth, your hands, your feet. So that means you're going to have to get in the battle. You have to get in the fight and get in the fray. This is not a place for chickens. Are you listening to me? This is not a place for chickens. Some Christians, all you hear is a noise and feathers flying. And they're running around. We are in him. How many remember the illustration I had with us seated with Christ in heaven? You remember that? Where are you right now? No, you're not. You're here in Tampa. You're here <laughs> sitting in the chair. Where are you now? You are seated in Christ in the heavenly places. So we conduct our affairs from our place of authority. See, religion, I, I hear people all the time, well, I'm just, I'm just an old rotten sinner, just saved by grace, and everybody goes, amen, now, that God would save a wretch like me, which we understand all that, but how long are you going to walk around with the sin tag on you? Aren't you a child of God? Well, the Bible says he that born of God does not sin. You know what that means? That means that you don't practice it as a way of life. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake or do something wrong or have a transgression. Are you listening to me? But you're not, you're not lying in your bed at night thinking, oh, I'm going to run these drugs through the state of Florida. And um, we're going to go pull off that bank deal, that job where my wife and I are going to hold up that convenience store on the way to the church today so that we can bring past an offering for the building. <laughs> There's nobody here that's born again that's sitting here thinking, planning evil or planning wickedness because it's not in you. It's not in you. You're born of God. You're a child of God. Well, they act like one. Yeah, but my flesh, my flesh. Why do you think the fruit of the Spirit have been given. Camp Morgan can tell you all about the fruit of the Spirit. How many have had a revelation of the fruit of the Spirit? Yeah. And the fruit of the Spirit is something that's with you every waking moment. Because a lot of people think that when you get touched by God, what you feel at that moment, that that's how you're going to feel all the time. Like you can feel the presence of God. This is just wonderful. And you go home and you just, you walk into the house and your wife comes flying by like an angel and you go, Woo! and everything's just wonderful. And the presence of the Lord. And I mean, you know, the food just multiplies on the table, you know. <laughs> and it's not like that. You still have to go take a shower. You still have to brush your teeth. No matter how anointed you are. You can raise the dead and smell like you died. So there's natural things that have to be taken care of. People think that if you get married in God, that you're never going to have a problem. It's just going to be fine. My wife will just agree to everything. Not the case. You've got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You have to work out your marriage 
Can you say amen? amen? So this grace is given to every one of us. Now go back with me to John chapter 15, and let's talk about how we live in this supply. How do we live in the anointing? People ask me all the time, how do you live in the anointing? How many hours a day do you pray? How many hours a day are you in the Word? Then they think, well, I get up at 6 o'clock, I'm praying tongues for four hours, and then I read the Bible for another six hours, and then I walk on water. It's not like that. It's not about what you do to get you into this. It's what he's done to get you into this. And it's not about me feeling anything. It's about me yielding. Somebody say, I want more anointing. You don't need more anointing. You just need to yield to the anointing you've got. And when you yield to the anointing you've got, you'll get more. Give me, I want more anointing. Pray for me. Pray for me, Brother Rodney. I want a double portion. You're not even using the portion you've got. Yielding is when you yield to the Spirit of God in the midst of adverse circumstances. Because when adverse circumstances come, you can have one or two reactions. You can go with the flesh, you can go with the Spirit. And whichever one you're going to go, you're going to get the fruit of that. Are you listening to me here? Well, can't I just have an off day? God knows I've been good. For 29 days. I just want one day where I can just lose it and just blow up. Why? Why do you have to? Why can't you live in this realm and be constrained? What you find in the spirit walk with God in your spiritual life is that the things of the flesh will start growing dim and dim and dim, and you'll become a spiritual mature person to where you won't run your mouth. Your mouth will even come under the control of the Spirit of God. So before when you would blab it out, you go, and your, your spirit checks your mouth. People say, what was it? No, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It ain't coming out of my mouth. In John 15, Jesus said, I'm the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. So if you're coming around here and you you feel yourself being clipped, you should be happy. Because he's pruning you. Because he wants you to look better and produce more fruit. Amen? Amen? If he chops you off the vine, you're in trouble then you're just going to be thrown away. He says, any branch in me that does not bear fruit. So what's our job? To bear fruit. What what should we expect from our life? Fruit. How does this fruit come? By the presence of God. The presence of God in your life, practiced on a daily basis, will produce fruit in your life. He says he cuts him, he trims him away, he cleans and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. So there are times when the Lord comes and starts pruning, don't shout. No, 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 no. don't cut that. (laughs) He's not being mean to you. He's wanting you to produce more. You have to trust him. Lord, and you just have to be bold. Say, Lord, whatever needs to go, I want it to go. I want it out. He says, yeah, you are cleansed and pruned already. Some people look like prunes. (laughs) He said, because of the word which I've given you and the teachings I've discussed with you. That's what the word's doing even today. In all the word going forth here, it's clipping. Attitudes, thoughts, patterns of the world. Dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Do you understand what this is saying here? He says, live in me and I'll live in you. I don't live in you. Jesus, you can live in me. Yes, I'll live in you if you live in me. Lord, I live in you, but will you live in me? I'll live in you if you live in me. Jesus is living in me. If you're born again, then Jesus is living in you. 
If your eyes are open, you can see Jesus in people. If your eyes are closed, you'll just see their faults. You'll just see their flesh. But if your eyes are open, you'll see Jesus. You'll see Jesus. Just as no branch can be a fruit of itself. So why are you trying to do it all by yourself? Without abiding in and being vitally united to the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. The greatest production of fruit, eternal fruit, will be as you remain connected to him. In other words, having his life flow through you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That does not mean to say that you are speaking in the these and the thous of the King James Version of the Bible. That doesn't mean to say that you walk around, verily, verily, I say unto you. Moreover, thou hast. You know, that doesn't mean, that just means you can be normal. You don't have to be weird. You can be normal. You can be you. In actual fact, just be you because everybody else is taken. <laughs> and let Jesus shine through you. I purpose in my heart when I was growing up that I wanted to be more and more like Jesus. And I saw men and women of God come around. I took from them what I could. But I don't want to be like them. I want to be like Jesus. Because I know that they didn't want to be like somebody else. They wanted to be like Jesus. He is the one. Jesus is the one. Now he says here, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in them bears much abundant fruit. Apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. If a person does not dwell in me, he is thrown out like a branch, broken off and withers. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and they're burned. Now I love this. If you live in me, abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you, and continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. Do you know how powerful that is? Do you realize that this is a blank check? Do you know that I posted this one scripture on Facebook this week and had more people attack me just for the scripture and tell me what it meant and what it didn't mean. And you know what? I never answered one of them. I don't need to explain that. It's self-explanatory. If you live in me and my words remain in you, and continue to live in your hearts. Ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. Oh, hallelujah. When you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored. Hallelujah. And glorified, and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. The anointing will produce the fruit. The anointing is the very sap of the vine. That's where you get your strength. That's where you get your life. The Bible says in him we live and we move and we have our being. The anointing of God is not just for a service so the preacher can preach or you can lay hands on the sick or someone can prophesy. The anointing of God is so that you can be the man that God's called you to be, that you can rise up, that you can live the Spirit-filled life, that you can operate in the nine fruit of the Spirit, that you have access to the nine gifts of the Spirit. Together, nine and nine is 18 that covers the 17 works of the flesh, that you can be the man and you can be the woman of God that God has called you to be that you can live a holy and a pure life separate from the world, not touching the things of the world, keeping yourself pure, 
not contaminated with the world's way of doing things. Living in the presence of God, living in the life of God, every day, every waking moment. That doesn't mean that you, 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 you know, people won't recognize you. They're going to know. That's Pastor David. Although they come to me now. Are you Pastor David? <laughs> but they're still going to know it's you. You're still going to know your husband. You're still going to know your wife. You'll still see where they are. But you're going to see the spirit mature believer rising up inside each individual. And you're going to be producing fruit everywhere you go that will remain, that's eternal. We do that, obviously, when we win souls, bring them to Jesus. That's eternal fruit. But there's much more than that. It's the fruit that's going to be made manifest in your daily life as you go around, as you bless people, as you help people, as you bear one another's burdens, as you see the life of Christ flowing through you, that wherever you go, I always tell the Lord, you know, if I land up in a certain situation, I always ask the Lord, the first thing I say, Lord, what can I do about this? When Brother R. Roberts was alive and they needed $52 million, I was sitting in my bus on the campus of ORU praying, God, if you give me the $52 million, I'll pay this thing off right now. I mean, I always put myself in the position, is there something you want me to do about this? Because God is looking for vessels. God's looking for people that will just say, Lord, here I am. Use me. God doesn't use you because of your past. He uses you because of his past. Are you listening to me? There are so many of God's people that are sitting by doing absolutely nothing because of their past. As if the Lord doesn't know everything about you. He knows everything about you. Everything about you. Everything about you. So if he calls you, don't argue with him. Don't argue with him. Don't say, oh, but God, I got this. I got what the Lord's going to say. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Sorry. Sorry. Mistake. Mistake. He knows what he's doing. If you were perfect, he couldn't use you because you'd be relying on your own strength and your own self. But because you need him, it's him that comes and makes up the imperfections. He makes up the difference. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I saw that in our marriage because we profiled ourselves, and I'm exactly half of what she's not. I mean, there's this thing they call the DISC profile, D-I-S-C. She's S-C, I'm D-I. She's high uh, uh, S-C and I'm a high D-I. We make a complete person together. But we had to learn how does a D-I talk to an S-C? Because it's two different worlds. But she is the half in the sense that makes me whole. So I've learned to lean on her strength and draw from her strength. And before, it used to be an irritation. What are you doing here? Well, you think there's something wrong with me. And there wasn't anything. She didn't think that anything was wrong with me. Otherwise, she wouldn't have married me. She thought I hung the moon. I was her knight in shining armor. It had nothing to do with something wrong with me. It's something that she saw that I couldn't see. And so when I learned, hey, you need to lean on the strength that she has. And it so is in the body of Christ that people will come around and everyone has different strengths. And we begin to recognize those strengths. Then the body begins to function. And when you come to the place where you're not threatened, you're not threatened by the strength of someone else. That's why in this church, we have powerful pastors. That, I mean, it's the most amazing thing to, and they're not clones, and they're all strong within themselves, and God has raised them up. I'm not threatened by that. 
I have to have them to function in what God's called us to do in this ministry. I know of ministries around the world that the only person has anointing is the main person. That's what everybody else is sucking wind. I mean, they have nothing. I mean, bless their hearts. They couldn't preach their way out of a wet paper bag. I mean, they don't even know how to come in the route of the rain because the minister in charge is threatened, and so they run off any, everybody that has an anointing so that everybody gets up, just blumbers around, and that makes them look good because they really blumber around themselves. Listen. You want to surround yourself with people that carry the anointing of God, that carry the fire of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for the ministerial team that God has put you in this church. Thank God for them. Thank God for all the pastors. I think I've done three TV shows in two months. They're the ones preaching on television. In the early days, I had to do everything. And Donica wouldn't even speak. I married her. I was 20. She was 19. I'd say, honey, come greet the people. She'd look down. She'd go. <laughs> she would have her hair down. She'd like, she look, look me through her hair and do this. And now you give her a mic three hours later. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm telling you, it's a transformation. And now thank God to have everybody come around. And I tell you, we need more. We need people with more expertise, not just in the ministry, but in different things to do with life, like our brothers here. Thank God for you. I know you're nervous because you've been around a lot of religious institutions and you've been sucked in the intake valve and spat out the back. But I promise you, you're in a different place. I promise you. Because our desire has been to take care of the, the, the people of God. How many have received food from this ministry for years? Raise your hand. Wave your hand. Everybody that's ever received food from this ministry for years. So it's not something we just started doing. But we need people with expertise in the different areas. Pastor Derek is a, is a civil engineer. There's many different talents that we must have in this hour that we're living in. So we don't have to run outside to people with ulterior motives that are not governed by the Spirit of God, that are not led by the Spirit of God. And their motive is not our motive. Our motive is fruit and eternal fruit. Because if your motive's wrong, the fruit's going to be bad. And it won't be eternal. You know what it'll be? Wood, hay, and stubble. And what's going to happen to that? Burned up. The power of the Holy Spirit is not for what people think. Yes, it's to baptize you, give you the prayer language, let you feel good. But it's so much more than that. It shocks me at some people's understanding of what the Holy Spirit really is about. They think it's for a service. I said, I use the Holy Spirit more outside the service than in the service. Because a lot of times I can't because of people blocking. Jesus could do no mighty work because of the unbelief. There's a lot of times God wants to do more, but he can't. I'm not talking about here. Talk about when we travel out. Some places we end up in a mortuary with the rigor mortis family, brother rigor mortis, sister rigor mortis, all sitting there. Some places it's a funeral home. You see the deacons, they stand there like funeral directors, poor bearers. Other places look like a museum. The pastor will even call you over. This guy, he dates back, carbon dates back <laughs> to the first, anyway, whatever. The time of the dinosaurs, brother and sister pterodactyl.
You laugh. You need to travel with us on the road sometimes and see what we have to look at. And then you endeavor to get them converted. You endeavor to get them saved, set free, delivered, cast the devil out of them, and then get the life of God in them and get them living by the life of Christ. That is like giving a bull an enema on a run. <laughs> you got the glove on. Ah! There goes the ball. <laughs> Don't tell me you saved and on fire and you look dead. Don't tell me. Don't tell me you love Jesus. You're on fire and you look like somebody needs to get you to the hospital immediately. If Jesus is in you and his spirit is in you, then that vitality is going to rise up and it's not only going to affect you, it's going to affect everybody else around about you. Everybody around about you. They can't be around you for a day without being affected and infected. And you produce fruit. They produce fruit. people of God are missing out on what God has for them because they live, live the religious life. They come to church, their little one hour dry cleaning service on a Sunday morning, in by 10, out by 11, three hymns, three hers, take up the offertory, preach from the Cyclopedia Britannica and the Reader's Digest, and then they pronounce the last rites and everybody goes home just as dead as what they came. And then they have to go to church the next week. I am the church. I mean, the church is in me. I'm in the church. The church is in me. I am. I'm having a service wherever I go. You, the meeting. You, the meeting. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, the meeting. Well, they'll think I'm crazy. They really do. They really do. If you're worried about what other people think, you'll never do what God calls you to do. I don't don't care. I stopped worrying a long time ago what people thought. Because I learned one thing people don't, some people don't even think. It doesn't really matter. All we are to do is to yield to the Spirit of God and do exactly what God tells us to do. That's what God requires of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to obey it. If God told me to charge hell with a dry water pistol, then I'm going to do it. You've got to stir yourself up. Stir yourself up. Stir yourself up. I'm in Christ. I'm in Him. I'm in the Beloved. I'm in heavenly places. All things are under my feet. He's given me His power and authority. He's given me that name that's above every name. No matter what comes my way, I've got that name of Jesus. Every knee must bow. Hallelujah. Every place on which the sole of my foot shall tread, he's given it unto me. Boldly, boldly I can proclaim. Boldly I can walk through the earth, carrying out heaven's mandate, backed by heaven's authority, backed by heaven's economy. Because I'm an ambassador. And I have diplomatic immunity. Glory to God. I'm living in this embassy, which is off limits to the enemy. Hallelujah. And I represent the kingdom of heaven. And when I show up, heaven's going to show up. 
Why? Because that's the fruit of what comes out of me. Because he said it'll be in you a well. In John 4. And in John 7, he said it would be a river. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Fruit. He's the vine with the branches. I'm united with him. I'm not cut off. I'm not cut off. I'm drawing my life from him. I'm drawing my sustenance from him. If I don't know what to do, he tells me. If I don't know where to go, he tells me where to go. If I don't have the answer from heaven, the answer comes. I'm a step ahead of the enemy. He, the Lord shows me. Come on, come on. I'm talking I, meaning you as the church. Come on. We are in this position. We're not trying to get there. We're there already. It was all done at Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Smith Wigglesworth, anybody heard of him? He was a plumber. He couldn't even read. He was illiterate. The only book he ever learned to read was the Bible. And when the Holy Ghost touched him, at the age of 56, God took him around the world for 30 years. And he shook whole continents. Because all he learned to do was to heal to the life of Christ. They would be driving through South Africa in a remote place. He'd tell the driver, stop the car right now. he get out the car. He starts walking out in the field. Walks over the hill. Finds a shepherd. Leads him to the Lord. And then comes right back, gets to the con, goes off. Years later, they find a, a guy pastoring this church. Said, how did you get saved? I don't know, but some English guy came walking through the field one day. <laughs> he said, the Lord's called you and prophesied him. And, and, you know, that's the fruit. That's the fruit. That's the fruit. That's the fruit. The fruit of the people that you're helping along the way. The fruit of not just you. It's not just you. The fruit is your family, your friends, your loved ones that you're helping along the way. Look what's happening to Robbie. His whole family are being turned around. That's fruit, Robbie. That's fruit. I feel the anointing so strong right now. There are times when I drive down the road and I, need to, I have to be careful because I'll drive off the ditch, into a ditch. Fortunately, I've got a four by four, so it doesn't matter. But I've got to be careful because you get so overwhelmed by his presence. There's times I'm walking around my house and I just feel his presence on me. I don't have all the answers, but I know who has the answers. And there's a lot of things that I'm impatient about, but he says, son, I got it under control. I know what I'm doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. It's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. It's the anointing. Make you a better father, better mother, better parent. Make you a better worker. Make you better everything. The anointing makes you excel. The anointing makes you do the impossible. The only way we're going to see America come back 
is by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no way. This country is too far gone, even as we speak. Only Jesus can save us now. And only a body, the body of Christ rising up as one man can turn the tide in this land. And that's called a great awakening. And I believe we're going to see it. it's going to be done not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And God is going to use every single one of you. Every single one of you. The people in this room, the call of God on you is so great. The call of God on your life is to impact whole nations. God did not preserve you or bring you from where you came from so you can just play tiddlywinks and just survive. God did not call you for survival. God called you for revival. God called you to bring about a transformation within this land. And whole cities are going to be shaken by the hand of God. Washington, D.C. will shake under the mighty hand of God. From the White House to the crack house, to the penthouse, to the schoolhouse, to the jailhouse, will be shaken in the hand of God. Los Angeles will be shaken by the mighty hand of God. America will tremble under God's mighty hand. The devil will not have this land. No. No. Just like the 1700s, there was a great awakening. And the 1800s, there was a great awakening. There is going to be another great awakening in this land. Even now, the plan of the enemy is being uncovered. The plan, whatever he plans in secret, is being exposed publicly. And I tell you, it's the church that will set the enemy back a generation, 40 years. Let me tell you right now. Every man and every woman rising up and finding their place in the body of Christ, marching through the land, yielding to the Spirit of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You will see the hand of God and the Spirit of God will shake this land and the harvest will come in. The devil will not have America. No. I better close. <laughs> I don't know how to stop this. It's like a train roaring down the railroad tracks. Jesus. Everyone used of God. There won't be no unused members. No one's useless. Everyone used. It's about your destiny. If God can send me from Africa, then what's he going to do with you? The fire of God is falling right now. The fire of the Holy Ghost is falling right now. Oh no, this doesn't go down well in religious circles. But we're not in one of those circles right here. I happen to know the pastor of this church. And he's in total agreement. If you followed the space agency, NASA, then you know that there's never been a time in the space agency's history that a rocket has ever left, a spaceship has ever left Cape Canaveral of its own accord. 
You've never put on the news. And they said, amazing thing happened. The shuttle took off. There was no fire. It just went by itself. Not one. Every one of them had fire in their tails. <laughs> and you're not going to do what God's called you to do without the fire of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God in you. Are you listening to me? It's the fire of God that will propel you through the gravitational pull of sin. It's the fire of God that will blast you into what God has for you. It's the fire of God that will push you through everything that the world would try to attach onto you. Okay, they're not dying. It's the fire of God coming on them. They've just come out of three weeks of intense and beatings. We talk to them just like this around the fire. In the middle of the forest. Their first touch with civilization was last night. Jesus, Jesus, let the church wake up, Lord. Let the church be empowered. Let the church be infused. Let the church be graced with your anointing to do what you've called us to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Our job is to put fire in your tails so that you can go somewhere and do what God's called you to do. Many of you are here in preparation. The time will come when you launch. That's what this place is. It's a launching pad to go to the nations of the earth Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Bring you, 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 you. Come here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come. Line them up right across here. Quickly, guys. Quickly. Come, line them there, in the line, across here. Quickly, this side, this side. Come, come. Straight line, this way. A straight line from here to there. If you're off a straight line today, you get it like this. That's a straight line. We're moving forward, guys. This is the straightest line I've ever seen in my life. Jesus, help us. <laughs> Give me a circle.
Some people don't want the fire of God. They want a little flame. They don't, they, want, they don't want the fire of God. They just want a little slow burn. Jesus. Some of you are too focused on you. You're not focused on him. It's in him we live. Not in you we live. In him we live and have our being. His ability, his power, his might, his strength. Jesus. Okay, okay, I'm gonna close. I'm gonna close, I'm gonna close now. Listen, listen. If men down through the years can wreak havoc because they're bound by devils, people like Hitler, and you go down through history, then what could happen if one man or one woman would yield to the Holy Ghost? What would happen? It's about ordinary people. God uses ordinary people. Jesus. Jesus. Listen, I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. There's people here today, you've held back because you've been burnt in the church. You got around a religious system and because you had a religion in you, your religion in you clashed with the religion in them and you were spat out the intake valve. But I'll tell you what, if you will submit to the Holy Ghost and you'll allow the Spirit of God to come and do a fresh work and you'll take your eyes of what took place in days gone by and you'll stop criticizing and you'll stop judging and you'll allow the work to God to be done in you. God will do mighty things through your life. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. Jesus. I want everybody to bow your heads, please, right across this room. If you're in this place, you fit in any one of these three categories, I want to give an invitation. For you right now, maybe you came here today. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're not born again. If you died today, where would you spend eternity? Where would you go? There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You don't have to go to a devil's hell. Because 2,000 years ago, on Calvary's cross, the price was paid. And the blood was shed. Just like that old song said, there is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath their flood. Lose all the guilty stain today. The power of sin, the power of guilt, the power of shame will be removed from your life. And you leave this place changed forever. Forever. Maybe you're in this place and once upon a time you gave your life to the Lord, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost your first love. You've lost your joy. You've lost the peace that you once had. Maybe it's something hidden that no one can see. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust. The hidden things of the heart. Maybe it's something outward that everyone can see. Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's not outward. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life. A sudden divorce. A bankruptcy. The loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world. But today, you say, I'm coming back. I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be on fire. I want to be on fire for God. I want to live the remainder of my days under the hand of God. I'm surrendering my life afresh. He said, he will take out the stony heart and put in the heart of flesh. He said, a new spirit will I put within you. And then lastly... If you're in this place and you love the Lord, but you're not sure, 
of your salvation. The devil's always lying to you, telling you that you're not saved, but you want to make sure if this is you, you can do it today. If you fit into any one of these three categories, right where you are, while heads about nice and close, quickly put your hand up right now. Say, pray for me. I need Jesus. Thank you. God bless 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 you. Put them up high. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Quickly raise it. That's it. That's it. More. Children, young people, older folk, quickly slip your hand up. Don't leave you the same way you came. You might never have another opportunity. Today's your day. Today's your day. Put your hands down, if you would, please. I want you to look at me. Look at me, everybody in the room, please. If you're in the section and you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer, I'm going to pray right now. Quickly, slip your hand up and say, include me. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Raise up high. Another hand there. Anybody else? Quickly, put it up high. This section, you didn't raise your hand, want to be included, put your hand up. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, yes, right at the back. Uh-huh. More, 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 more. Anybody else? Right there, thank you. Anybody else? Anyone else? Right up back there. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Quickly, put it up high. <laughs> Another hand there. Anybody else? Slip it up high. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Put it up high right now. Little one's got a hand in there. Yes, 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 right at the back, right over there. Thank you. I want everyone that raise your hand, if you would stand, please. We're going to pray together. Stand right now. Stand right now. All across the room, stand. If you raise your hand, stand right now. We're going to pray. I want you to come from where you are and come stand around the altar. Come. Come right now. Come around the altar. Come right around the altar. Today is the day of salvation and freedom. Let him have his way. to Jesus. Let him have his way. Now listen to me, church. Listen, you're going to have to bear with me because the Lord's getting me ready for something very big this year. The Lord spoke to me back in the 90s when we were doing the extended meetings. And he told me to stop doing them because everybody was doing them. That's okay. He said, stop doing it because everybody's doing it. He said, the time will come when you'll do it again. And I'll tell you when. And I, know, I knew it was close last year. And then this 30th of June, we're starting over at Family Worship Center, the brand new 3,200 seat auditorium, Pastor Reggie Scarborough Family Worship Center, Lakeland, Florida. It's going to be televised around the world on CTN, on Channel 55, Super Channel 55. And we don't know how long that's going to go. It could go a week or a month. But I'm already get, getting calls from Los Angeles. Chinese churches coming together. So we're not going to do this all the time, but four cities a year. I feel it in me. I feel it on me. I feel, I feel God just moving me into, you know, some of the things I used to do before we start the church. And God has got the church to place right now. It's just pretty phenomenal, this river church and the people of this church. And now we're going to see an explosion across the nation. I believe that it's going to explode. You're going to see it happen. God loves America. America is going to be shaken. God sent me to America as a missionary to America. He sent me to America as a missionary. I'm not an American preacher. I'm a missionary to America. Big difference. I'm not here because I need a job. You couldn't pay me to do what I do. 
I'll pay you to do what I do. Okay. I want you to look at me right now, if you would, please. We're going to pray one prayer. One prayer fits all. If you mean business with God, God means business with you. You are the reason why the Lord sent me all the way from Africa to America. And we're going to pray right now, and God's going to do the work in your life. I want you to close your eyes and raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And pray this after me. Believe it in your heart. Say it with your mouth. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, and I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead, I will be saved. So, Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross, and by the shed blood of Jesus, I'm born again. I am saved. Now lift your hands and thank the Lord right now. The Lord's going to use you in a very powerful way, even in what you're doing and you're learning. But to see this established all around the globe, God's training you and raising you up right now. You watch what's going to happen. Because he's heard the cry of your heart. Many are going to be fed. Many are going to be fed. Okay? Hallelujah. Now, Father, seal them now by your blood and by your spirit so that nothing of the world can get in. Be about them as a wall of fire and raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them for the remainder of their days, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah.